us. Now let's speak with uh, uh, Honorable Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology, Malam Wadatao Madawaki, who joins me virtually from Zamfara State as we take a look at the state of education in the state and foreign scholarship. Uh, good evening to you, Malam. Thank you so much for joining us on Politics Tonight. Welcome. Good evening for having me on this program. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, so talk to us about the state of education in Zamfara State when uh, the current administration has assumed office. And what has the administration of Governor Dadalawa done to change the narrative in the last one year? Uh, when we came into uh, power in Zamfara State, I think uh, we met a very bad situation where uh, the educational system was in chaos, in shambles, and uh, there were so many challenges that we were, the education sector was facing. And uh, in order to ensure that uh, there is uh, serious attention given to education, the executive governor of the forest state of the new administration, Yoda Lawal, uh, declared a state of emergency on the sector to ensure that whatever is supposed to have been done is done in a way that there is rapid intervention in the area of education. So based on that one, after the declaration, action was taken into various acts because we analyzed the areas of challenges that we met and we continued to address them one after the other. Mm. So what has the governor done to change this narrative in the last one year with specific uh, records? Okay, what, what the executive governor did was to ensure that uh, all those areas of challenges that were carried out, uh, were, were carried out, he attended to them first. There were issues of uh, uh, non-payment of examination fees for, since 2014 to uh, 2023. Uh, students wrote examinations in public schools, but there was no uh, payment to the examination bodies, and the uh, results were not released to these people. So what he did was to enter into discussion with the uh, examination bodies and uh, to ensure that uh, things are done well, the examination bodies were paid what the, 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 they were being owed. And uh, the NECO for 20, as, as, uh, 19, 2020, up to 2024. And then the WIAC from 2017 up to 2024, all these were paid. And uh, we went into the issue of renovation and rehabilitation of the dilapidated infrastructure in the education sector. And uh, based on that one, the initial uh, activity that we taken was for the government to intervene in about two, uh, 325 schools that were renovated and were given accommodation, I mean, uh, furniture, which ensured that uh, students were, uh, uh, are sitting in proper conditions. And then uh, with the, taking leverage of uh, the other areas of uh, concern, the issue of uh, uh, students who are on scholarship, those in Sudan and India, and as well as uh, uh, Cyprus, attention was given to those areas mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, we intervene properly in those areas. Because you've gone there, I'd like you to talk to us about the students on scholarship in Cyprus, because uh, there have been issues regarding their tuition fees and accommodation. What exactly is the true state of uh, things? Uh, you see, what happened was that the, the, the previous administration uh, sent those students to Cyprus, about 93 of them. And uh, when they sent them, there was no any documentation, no uh, memorandum of understanding. It was simply an issue where a consultant was uh, taken, he took the children and took them to uh, Cyprus. There was no memorandum of understanding no any paper to show that this is how this issue is going to be run. So based on that one, uh, the school authority decided uh, to do what they feel like doing by putting them uh, into a program that uh, they said is a full uh, content of the program where the students were given accommodation in the school and they were being fed in the school. So based on that one, the whole issue was that whether you as a student you eat or you have not eaten, I mean, it is recorded as we have eaten. And then from 2022, the former administration refused to pay the university whatever agreement they have had, which has not been written down to guide the implementation of the program. Mm. And uh, based on that, when the school authority now uh, stopped the uh, students from going to classrooms and they stopped feeding them. And when this administration of uh, uh, 
Dr. Doda came into existence, uh, the report was given to him that this is the situation that the students were facing. Based on that one, he uh, asked his uh, SSG, that the Secretary of the State Government, to intervene, and a Zoom meeting was set up where uh, there, there was discussion between the university and the state government. Uh, during the intervention, during the discussions, it was realized that there were no agreements, nothing whatsoever that is guiding right. the agreement. All right, so, so Honorable, I mean, one. I can only imagine, I mean, this is a terrible situation out there, and I can only imagine what these young scholars are going through in a country without their parents and family members, out there with the hope that they have a responsible government that will cater to their needs as promised. And according to reports, these students have been dropped from attending lectures for almost a year. First, how did we get here? And as part of a three-member delegation to Cyprus, what exactly did you find out? Well, what we found out exactly was that uh, there were inconsistencies in uh, what had been said. Because when we, the, well, the, the Zoom meeting took place between the government of Zamfara State, new government, and uh, the university, uh, we realized the inconsistencies that were there. However, in order to start actual conversation with them, mm. uh, uh, about 100, uh, and, uh, uh, 100 million naira was sent to, uh, 150 million naira was sent to the university. First, the 84 million was meant for uh, the uh, school authority to uh, accept as part payment of the money that are going to be there. And then 30 million naira was meant for the students to get their accommodation. And uh, when that one was done, they were to re reconcile their, their accounts. Mm -hmm. They failed to reconcile the accounts, and they couldn't do it. So when we sent to them again that what is the situation, because we are expecting them to report back to us so that we can take action, but they did not do so. So what we did was to now engage the services of the uh, Embassy of Nigeria in Ankara, Turkey, who now intervened on behalf of the new administration, and they talked to the people. And uh, they agreed that they would invite us for a visit so that we can discuss face to face. And uh, when they did that, we said, okay, we sent another 100 million naira to them in order to facilitate our comments so that by the time we come, they'll be able to welcome us and we discuss. And we did that. But when we went there, we realized there were these inconsistencies. Students that have spent almost one year without being in accommodation, mm. they have indicated that we have to, the government has to pay that money. Students that have not eaten for almost one year, they are indicating that that also, those money has have to be paid. But we said, no, it cannot be possible. The bursary department and the registry have an issue, have a problem. And that problem is that the, the bursary department has not reported to the registry what amount of money that has been received from the new administration of the first state. And it has not been, I mean, indicated in the account of the students. Based on that right. one, we said, let them reconcile their accounts and then get back to us and then we now uh, pay whatever is there so that we ensure that uh, money, I mean, that is paid to them is money that, they are owed, that the state government is owed. All right. So, Honorable Commissioner, for the purpose of clarity, if the same issue happened in India and Sudan, and it was easy for the government of the day to collaborate smoothly to resolve the same issue without those countries uh, to enable the students complete their programs and return home, why is the Cyprus International University proving difficult? And I'm also concerned because about the issue of improper documentation of these students. Does it mean that even as students, they lived every day in fear of being deported back to Nigeria? One, we have had very good cooperation with the universities in India and the University of Sudan. And uh, they assisted us. Even in fact, those of Sudan, we had to invite the, uh, three of their lecturers who came to Nigeria mm. to ensure that uh, examinations for the students that were about to uh, graduate were given to them. They went back to Sudan, marked the examination, gave the, the result, and everything was okay. But the issue of Cyprus is a different case. Because of the misunderstanding and because of the lack of documentation, they are afraid for us to see that uh, what is supposed to be done, they have not done what they were supposed to have been done. So we are not receiving proper cooperation from them. However, we are planning to ensure, and uh, in fact, we have almost gone to a, an advanced stage to ensure that the monies for the students are paid one year for their accommodation, one year for their feeding, mm. and then we have engaged the services of the Embassy of Nigeria in Ankara to ensure that uh, their resident permits and passports are renewed depending when the school authority will be able to now reconcile their records because they are the ones that are dragging the issue and uh, we are waiting for them. Because when we went okay. there, we were supposed to have been there for only one week, but we have to spend 10 days mm. and they could not reconcile their records. All right, so what kind of conversation are you having with uh, the Cyprus uh, diplomatic mission about this? 
No, when, when we went to uh, Cyprus, before on our way going, because we wanted it to be officially on record, we went together with uh, two diplomatic staff from Ankara. Okay. So all the meetings that we had with the university uh, officials were, were together with these people from the embassy, the diplomatic staff from the embassy. We were together with them, all the four or five meetings, different meetings that we had with the school authority. And now they are the ones that are now carrying out these uh, interventions on our behalf because we, could, we will not be able there to remain there in Philatum. So that's why we said they should handle and they are handling and the issue of their, their students' uh, resident permit and passport, it is the people, the officials from the uh, diplomatic mission that are now handling that issue on behalf of the Palestinian government. All right, so Prof, where do we go from here? Now that I said, in, in the next two weeks also, we are going to send through the diplomatic mission the money for the students' accommodation and feeding to be paid to them directly. We wouldn't want a situation where we send it through the school and then the school will hold on to it and then there is a problem again. We are waiting for the school to now give us the reconciled version because we went through the documents one after the other and we realized the, I mean, the uh, problems that are there. We related those problems or challenges to them and we asked, see what we have on record that the, the, the person government is owing you. But you are giving us a different record. Reconcile those records and come back to us or write to us. Then we now come and sit down and pay you whatever that's for so long as it tallies with what we have as official records. All right. Uh, Honorable, thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. It's a pleasure hearing uh, you and helping us with this clarification. Thank you so much. I've been speaking thank with you. Malam Wadatao Madawaki, is Honorable Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology in Zamfara State. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for watching, everyone. That marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But you can watch the repeat broadcast of this episode at half past midnight. Get in touch with us on our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, and X at Stevenson News NG and at Olajibokia using the hashtag Politics Tonight. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Stevenson News Nigeria. I am Olajibokia Olatunji. Good night, everyone, and have a great weekend.